You've broken the third rule of Paranesi. Don't learn the third rule. You're alone and imprisoned and must change before you can hope to reach the exit. <laughs> cool. Incarceration. With a lamp chained to your wrist, Paranesi's walls fall away. The prison blooms into an endless, nightmarish forest of bleak and shifting architecture. During tours with the chaplains, the prison at least adhered to conventional perspective and orientation. No longer. Upstairs, you may find yourself in the cellars. Descending, you arrive at a balcony. Yet no matter how you wander, Paranesi brings you back to the same place. A maze of low ceilings and opaque black water. You've been convicted of a major infraction and you'll need to change a great deal before you're released. Wander in search of an exit. If you've changed enough and are persipacious enough, you may find your way out. I mean, can I do that without changing at all? Mm, let's not risk it. Let's try to approach one of the chaplains. Perhaps they'll remember who you are. Perhaps they will favor you above all the other hopeless souls. The chaplains stalk among the prisoners, offering advice on how to change. But Paranesi is vast, and many of the wandering prisoners have only encountered them in rumor and legend. They pass on stories of the chaplains in reverent whispers, as though they speak of gods or phantoms. Thanks to your tour, however, you know exactly where to find them. Okay, I have good rapport with the gallant reformer. Ask the gallant reformer for help. You find your way to the statue garden where he's leading a group of prisoners in song. The reformer holds up a hand and the prisoners pause their hymn. He fixes you with a placid stare and quizzes you about the sins of your past. With every new confession, he tuts quietly. Once he's heard enough, he leads you to a tranquil pond in the middle of the statuaries. The flagstones are stained red. He hands you a cat o' nine tails. A remarkable whip, he says. Its crack is instantaneous to the observer, but to the punished it lasts a month. One month of searing pain. Plenty of time for you to contemplate your misdeeds. I leave it up to you whether you use it. I think I just became lightless, my soul. It's alright. I can fix that. What if I try to leave before I've changed enough? Can I approach another one of the chaplains? Trick the glib performer into imprisonment. Extract your revenge. Hmm. Nope, not going to risk it, because they might be Langley's lost lover. It would be funny. Ask the great conformer for help. I didn't I haven't built any rapport with them, but I have gone with them quite a bit. Down to the black flooded cellars where you find her instructing a shrieking wretch in the correct use of cutlery. Forget, advises the conformer. Once you're a blank slate, I will teach you all you need to know. She sits you down for a preliminary lesson. Hands behind her back, she delivers a dry lecture on the accepted ways to ask a gentleman to dance. The proper ways to address a bishop and the hours at which it is not impolite to feel melancholy. Her voice drains the blood from your limbs. You have forgotten your first kiss. You find yourself no longer able to imagine colors. Yeah, my soul's getting all fucked up. Ask the glib performer for help. They don't like me. But I can try. Wait, glib... Wait, 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 glib performer? No, 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 that's... That's the one who just put me here. Sorry, I confused them with the something deformer. You climb up a winding staircase to find him dancing among the gargoyles. Dancing. 
Follow my example, advises the performer, nonchalantly juggling coins. Shuck your scruples like a stifling skin. Learn to loathe the faces of your family. Lose the ability to tell fact from fiction. Spin lies from truth and truth from lies. Hurt people just to see the bruise. It's all good fun, I assure you. He leads you to a dismal alcove where prisoners are playing cards. The faces in the deck are ones you recognize. Your friends, rivals, parents, past lovers. Play to win, advises the performer, and leaves you. Okay, I think now I might be able to escape. I'm just wondering if maybe I need to trick the glib performer to be incarcerated, and then at that point I could figure out more about their past and get them to come with me? Help them change and leave, and maybe they'll change back into their old selves? Can you do that? If you've been in here once, and you've changed completely, can you go in here again and then change completely back to what you were before? I don't know, but I'm going to get out normally first, I think, and then try to speak with the glib performer again, and then if that doesn't work, try to trick them and get them imprisoned. Because otherwise, there's no other way for me to do anything with them, right? Search for an escape. Perhaps you've changed enough to find your way out. Attempting to navigate through Paranesi is like trying to steer a nightmare. Bridges shift beneath your feet, taking you back to where you began. Every corner you turn reveals another mile of identical hallway. You must never, ever trust a staircase. After timeless days, your shoes are in tatters and your feet blistered. As you pause, ready to give up, you feel a sudden lightness at your wrist. Your shackles have crumbled. The lamp clatters to the floor. You lift your weary head and find yourself staring at the exit. I'm no longer incarcerated. And I'm going to have to come back later to tell them off for tricking me. I wonder if things are going to be different when I go back there now, right? Like, can I... Surely I, I can't just take a tour with a glib performer and everything's... And we're just going to act as if nothing happened, right? Hmm. I'm wondering if I should go fix my soul and then come back here? Or just... Hmm. I thought there was, I did an option that required me to not be lightless, and lightless was one of the things that I gained. Because I'm trying to juggle fixing my soul with Caduceus and this place. Because if I get cast, like, if I have to try to trick them into falling and becoming imprisoned here, the glib performer, that was like a 60% chance or something. If I fail that, I'll be back in here, my soul's going to get messed up again. But I think I should fix my soul first. I should probably fix my soul, go to Caduceus, and then come back here. Would probably be the best thing. Yeah, okay. It's not that far to Eagles Empyrean where the uh, relay is, so... I'll see you back at, uh, I guess, Kirillin. At Kirillin, I just cleared up my soul. I had almost every flaw except one or two. I think I had like maybe five flaws or so. Which is a pretty messed up soul, but the nice thing is, each time you get rid of one of your flaws, it gives you a bunch of stuff, like Salon Stude Gossip and Visions of the Heavens and things like that. You actually get quite a bit for it. Back at Caduceus with a perfectly fine soul and many moments of inspiration. Explore the dark side of Caduceus to lower my terror. Bargain of Literature. I'll just grab that all right now. I got a lot of storage space. Okay. Let's get a port report. Any point in talking to the Thorn Maiden? As you approach, she raises a hand bedecked with rings of white sapphires. Whether she is bidding you approach or refrain, or refrain is unclear. 
Yeah, so before I asked what is going on here, and, well, they said, like, uh, there's something behind the mirrors. Um, there's a gate behind the glass. There's a kingdom that's not. Probably talking about Parabola. I'm not sure what to do with that, but I probably have to participate in the Rite of the Rose again, I would guess. Ask her the usual questions. I don't think anything has changed in those answers, though. Sorry, did I talk to the Bohemians? I forgot. Yeah, just a description. Nothing to do in the caverns, right? Yep, just going in circles. Okay, let me refresh this so it doesn't get laggy, and let's do the rights. I have... Oh, damn, I have 13 moments of inspiration? I didn't realize I had that many. Ooh, yeah, that's the special one, right? That wasn't an option before, I'm pretty sure. Mysteries of Indulgence. So this is only something that can be done when I've given more to the rose. I think I've done that before, but only when it's fading. Uh, let's do this. Approach the Thorn Maiden. She looks at you with a faint smile. Her attendants fade away into the cascade of roses as she bids you approach. No, the kingdom is almost at hand. You've almost paid your way. They've tasted of your tears and seen into your soul. She runs her hand down her stave, agitated. If you wish passage to the garden behind the glass, leave a gift in a rose as they fade. Okay, so I gotta do one more thing. Alright, I can do that. Plenty of moments of inspiration. So I can't do that until they've almost faded, so I might as well do other stuff. Resting among the roses, I know that decreases my terror by a lot, actually, wow. Let's do that again. Wait, what? Oh my god, it... what the hell? My terror went up this time and I lost a crew? You lay your head on a cushion of wild roses. One of your stokers has had the same idea. She lies only a couple of arm lengths away. She winks at you, then tucks her hat down over her head. As you drift off, you see the red-masked rosebinders making their way through the field of the slumbering, laying petals on the sleeper's eyes. When you wake, you're alone. Does that happen when you do the same thing twice, or is it just a random chance? This time it was... okay. Cavort amongst the roses. Still not time just yet. I don't want to take a gift of the rose because I'm supposed to be giving things to it. It would probably be fine, but I just don't want to risk it. Now, I remember I did something with the roses, like kiss them or, or something, and it messed up my soul a little bit. Not in a way that prevented me from doing things here, but I just don't want to touch that. So, I don't know, approach the Thorn Maiden again? That uses up time, right? Or does it? Actually, I don't think it does. Cavort again? Cavort again? Failure. The roses run wild and verdant in the temple forecourt. You stumble through the undergrowth, dazzled by the variegated flowers and dulled by their perfumes. A poet with eyes like a stormy sea approaches you. His fingertips are bleeding, dripping crimson into the wildflower carpet. Bitten, he cries, displaying his bloody fingers. Oh, the insatiate rose. I think that's happened before. Okay, now it's time. Leave a gift for the roses. Time to give a gift to the insatiate rose. Let me guess, this is going to mean my hearts go even lower. <laughs> That's usually what it means. 
you are led to the Hall of the Drummer, where an emerald rose the size of an anemone, or anemone, blooms. The, I, what is an anemone? Well, it's either a type of flower, is one of the results, or it's a sea anemone. Either way, I think it's pronounced anemone. There's a hollow at the heart of the petals where stamen, stamen coil like a nest of serpents. The rose binder beckons for you to approach. What will you give the rose? A member of my crew, no. Peace of my mind, increase my nightmares. Peace of my flesh, reduce your iron and hearts by one. Ugh. I, I mean, nightmares are not permanent. Stat reduction is. Let's do a piece of my mind. What is one more madness in Eleutheria? Kneel, the rose binder says, indicating a silk cushion before the rose. You kneel. A red blindfold is wound around your face, and your head is pushed into the rose, which closes around you. You do not remember what happens there. You wake covered in nectar. Your eyes have to be pried open from the pollen. There's an aching darkness behind your eyes. When you sleep, you will go there again. You've given enough to the roses. Approach the Thorn Maiden on your next visit. So we gotta go one more time. Yeah, this place is really, really expensive. Think of how many times I had to give three moments of inspiration to get here. Um, let's exit out, just so it's less laggy. Lag management, always gotta keep that in mind. Let's go again. Approach the Thorn Maiden. Her eyes are on you and only you. Will you leave it all behind and follow me? You are ready. The light. She smiles. You are ready. Follow me. She takes your hand, then beckons her attendants to follow her. The honey-eyed poets and the wild-eyed Bacchans and the dark-eyed musicians. She leads you behind her marble throne to where the sunlight is strongest, radiant as a newborn star. It pours from the blank white wall. The Thorn Maiden walks forward and through the wall. You touch the wall to discover it is not cold marble but glass. Then your hand passes through entirely. The heat of sunlight is on your hands. The cloying scent of roses is almost overwhelming. Follow, watch from this side of the glass, or back away. Follow. You followed her thus far. You stand in a garden beneath an amber sky. Wild roses cover arbors. Rose binders tend hedges. Larger shapes, akin to the devil's, but much longer and with many more limbs, assist them. The garden is bounded on all sides by a wood, whispering and verdant. Something slithers through the shadows. The Thorn Maiden places her hand on your shoulder. No closer. We are permitted thus far and no further. Smell the roses. Enjoy the sunlight. I shall bring it home one day soon. Relaxed hours later, she leads you back to the mirror, which sits in the heart of the garden. The something slithering through the shadows, I'm pretty sure, is a finger king? Remember, those are the, I think, particularly powerful entities that kind of, I don't know, run or something, the uh, parabola? I think they're like the rulers of Parabola or something. Anyway, I think they look kind of like snakes. You have pierced the heart of Caduceus and seen the garden behind the glass. Five terror. The thorn mane has revealed to you the greatest mystery of Caduceus. Two crimson promises. Mm, mine is overrich, cindered. Okay, so my soul is a little bit messed up.
So is there anything more I can do here now? Descend to the caverns. That's probably going to go in a circle. Yep. I could do the right once more. I mean, I certainly have the moments of inspiration, although at this point I kind of want to save them to reduce my nightmares. I don't remember how many I need to reduce my nightmares again, but it's a lot. Probably like eight or so. Talk to the Thorn Maiden. Yeah, nothing new there. I think that's it? Unless I participate again, which I don't think would give me anything new, because I really feel like I've kind of hit at the heart of Caduceus. At Paranesi once again. Let's explore the gardens, get her terror down. Oh, I could also recruit a former prisoner. That's alright. Let's contemplate the sculptures. Alright, let's go have a talk with a certain person, hmm? Choose the glib performer. Mm, this isn't any different. No, surprisingly, we didn't have a chat before going back down. Huh. Yeah, this isn't different either. Did I press the... Re the re I want to say reformer. Did I press the performer for information about the other chaplains? Do they answer me at all? He produces a string of colorful handkerchiefs from his sleeve and wraps them around your neck, just tight enough to squeeze. The other chaplains are extremely dull, he says. Why don't we talk about something fascinating, like the patterns upon moths, or gentrification, or the sawing apart of an elderly widower? Okay, hmm. Help him torment the prisoners. Oh, damn. I'm sorry I succeeded. You rack your brain and soon come up with torments that you suspect will amuse the performer. You dangle prisoners over lengthy drops by their ankles or lift them bodily and leave them on high ledges from which they can't escape. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> by the time you're finished, the performer is laughing uproariously. Do you know why I got rid of my eyes? He asks. So I couldn't see what I'd become. He laughs again and begins to descend. Come on, I'm taking you back outside. No refunds. Wait, what? So th They're laughing and they seem to like it, but... Also, they seem to not. Because we have immediately returned and they got rid of their eyes so they couldn't see what I'd become. Hmm. Interesting. Wait, we can't be your guide at two tours per visit, but, but I only had one tour. Mm hmm? Let's have another go at Paranesi. Um, it just occurred to me that now that I don't need to learn the third rule of Paranesi that I probably, I mean, no, I definitely can't trick that person into telling me the third rule, getting them imprisoned. So I just can't do that anymore. I hope that wasn't Langley's lover. Oh, I really hope. Let's do the garden, contemplate the sculpture, zero terror. <clears throat> Let's take another crack at the servitor. Convince it to change, 23% chance, please. <sighs> okay, then who now? Do I try the glib performer again? Just in case there's something else I can do? Hmm. I'm gonna try it. The 
refuse to mistreat the prisoners. Hmm, that's just it. Taking you back out, no refunds. Yeah, I guess because I've learned the rule, there's nothing more to do. So after whatever your thing is, you just leave. Strange place. I still feel like I can do more here. I guess I should try to go with the Deformer, I think is their name, but I'm pretty sure that's just, I'm never going to be able to build up a rapport with them. But I should try. Yeah. Alright, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode for now. So, I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return... I don't know, there's not much to do in Eleutheria at this point, other than Paranesi. I really want to, like, crack Paranesi. Like, I'm, I feel like there's a decent chance that one of the people there is Langley's lost lover. So, I guess I'm probably going to go back to Paranesi after killing some time. <laughs>